Now, as I was campaign here and I and made that commitment, I don't think anybody heard it, but we're back. We're back. And I, uh, my name is Joe, Joe Biden. I work for uh, Congressman Axney. Uh, there she is. I learned a long time ago when she says, I have a, I just say yes. I say yes right off the bat. I tell you what, she is one hell of a champion for you. I mean it. I mean it. You ask anyone, if you ever come to Washington, walk into the Congress, say, you know anybody from Iowa? The first thing they'll say, they'll mention her name. Anyway, she said, thank you. Thank you for your friendship. To start, I'd like to say a few words about the mass shooting in New York City subway this morning you've all read and heard about. Jill and I, my wife Jill and I, are praying for those that are injured and uh, all those touched by that trauma. And we're grateful for all the first responders who jumped into action, including civilians, civilians who didn't hesitate to help their fellow passengers and try to shield them. My team has been in touch with Mayor Adams uh, and New York's police commissioner, and the Department of Justice and the FBI are working closely with the NYPD on the ground. We're going to continue to stay in close contact with New York authorities and as we learn more about the situation over the coming hours and days. And uh, something could have broken between now and the last hour. I haven't heard right, folks. He's, he's talking about he's talking about the New York City yeah. subway uh, shooting and and, and, and and you know think about this. Now, yes, just yesterday he talked about uh, ghost guns. Now he, you, he he brings this up today. I mean, thank was it ghost guns? I doubt it. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. In, in, in a couple of minutes, I'll, let's take a peek in again. I want to hear if he's going to start talking about inflation because we want to take this apart. We want to talk about it. I am not joking. There is no fence at the White House high enough to keep her out. None. All kidding aside, Cindy, you're doing one heck of a job. Thank you so much. I also want to say a special hello to someone who really wanted to be here today. And you think I'm kidding. He started, he's the guy that brought me to the first biofuel plant in Iowa years ago. Your former governor and my secretary of agriculture, Tom Vilsack. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. He went to a press event in Washington, and like two-thirds of the people who went, I think, they got COVID. He's doing fine. Spoke to him, but uh, he couldn't be here. But I'm here today to talk about the work we're doing to lower costs for American families and put rural America at the center of our efforts to build a future that's made in America. And that's not hyperbole. It's about being made in America. A lot of that has, has to do with this industry. I just had a chance to see uh, the work you do here and turn more than 40 million bushels of local corn into 130 million gallons of ethanol a year. That's a lot of gallons. We want to see facilities like this all over the Midwest, and here's why. First, it supports, farm, it supports farmers and the farm economy. You know, everybody thinks Delaware is a big industrial state and banking state and DuPont. We have a $4 billion industry. It's called agriculture in Delaware. And it's mostly, we have more chickens in Delaware, broiler ch chickens than you have in the entire Midwest, I think. But all kidding aside, it is a big industry in Delaware. And my state, what, everybody what, thinks is a... What the hell is he talking state. about? It's broiler chickens in Delaware? You got more broiler chickens in Delaware than the rest of the United States? All kidding aside. And by the way, Joe, by the way, Joe, are you pro-ethanol? Because this is very interesting. Because you can't put ethanol in an electric car. It's a combustible engine. It's not a renewable. It's not wind, solar, or water. What are you talking about, Joe? Hey, hey, AOC, you guys okay with this? You, hey, I'm fine with this, too. You want to cut back on oil? That's fine. Let us use corn. That's fine. As long as we don't have to give up our combustible engines, your truckers don't want to do it either. Let's take a listen. get a fair price for it. Second, it creates good-paying jobs. It's estimated there are over 400,000 jobs directly. It creates good paying jobs? Energy. Energy has a 9 million employment number, and they're high paying jobs, Joe. I don't know what you're talking about. If that's the goal, open up our energy industry, drop the price of oil, drop the price of gas, drop the price of food. What are you talking about? Listen. When you have competition, you have better prices. In addition to all that, you get less harm to the environment lower greenhouse gas emissions, and you get even byproducts like grain here 
which does uh, goes into animal hey, feed and which helps you, cattle producers and lowers their You want costs. competition, Joe? This is an industry. You want competition? How about we compete? American oil companies, producers compete with the Saudi Arabias, uh, the Irans, the Venezuelans, and all the other communist countries and all the dictatorships that hate us. Russia, how about that one? You let our industry, oil industry, compete with them. You shut us down, we got to go to them. BS, Joe. Stop with the let's compete. You want to compete? Open up our energy industry. We will compete and crush the rest of the world. Listen. A little bit of biofuel. It's where it's called drop in, meaning 100% biofuel. You don't need to take my word for it. Take the word of the CEO of American Airlines who said sustainable aviation fuel is the cornerstone of our strategy, end of quote. And the CEO of United Airlines who call the first biofuel-powered flight a significant milestone for our efforts to decarbonize our industry. To bring that future within reach, I proposed a sustainable aviation fuel tax that we brought together the governments, agencies, aircraft manufacturers, airlines, fuel producers, airports, advanced, cleaner, and more sustainable fuels for American aviation. That's how we're going to get there. And we can. We're in the cusp of so many significant things are going to happen in this country. You hear what he just said? Side. That's how we're going to get you to use biofuels. We're going to tax regular. This is so liberal. This is a perfect Democrat talking point right there. The way you make people, you force, you force it through taxation. That's not free market. That's not open markets. That's not competitive, which you just touted five minutes ago. You're going to tax something to drive people away from it, make it cost more. So you go towards something that you want them to do. That's coercion. That's statism. That's socialism. That's not free market capitalism. Listen. Not a joke. Where if the price of a gallon of gasoline went up, it was a conversation at our kitchen table. It mattered. It mattered with my mom and dad. It made a difference. We felt it. Yeah. Putin's it invasion of Ukraine has driven up gas prices and food prices all there over the world. The two most largest grain producers in the world, Putin. China and, uh, excuse me, Ukraine and Russia are not doing what they usually do, so everything's going up. We saw today's inflation data. 70% of the increase in prices in March came from Putin's price hike in gasoline. That we is need not to right. That is blatantly false. That's a lie, Joe. That is a lie. 70% of, of that had nothing. Are you out of your mind blaming Putin? For, for a, a trend line, throw that, that chart up, throw that ch chart up. This trend line has been going on for the better part of a year and a half since you were elected president. You got that chart, folks? Take me off the screen, show that CPI chart, the one from Axios. Look at that. That goes back to 2020. Cut it out, Joe. It's 45 days, 50 days from Putin, not 18, 15 months. Lies, folks, lies, they're spewing lies. Right now. All right, I can't do this anymore.